we're going to look at a couple of other types of patterns. If you have a look at this pattern here, it's very familiar, uh, except for the fact that the problem is you've got negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. How do we deal with that? Well, let me pause on the patterns for a moment, just draw a line under them, and I'm going to do a little work on exponents. Have a look here. Negative 1 to the power of 1 is just negative 1. Negative 1 squared means negative 1 times negative 1. Negative times negative is positive, so our answer here is 1. Negative 1 cubed, you've got negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. That is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 to the power of 4, you're going to have negative times negative is positive, times negative is negative, times negative becomes positive again, so you get 1. And negative 1 to the power of 5 is going to be negative times negative, positive times negative, right, etc, etc. You can figure this one out. You'll see that the answer is negative. So this is a very nice little thing we got here. If you notice what's going on, you'll see that if you've got negative 1 to an odd power, the answer is negative 1, and negative 1 to an even power is 1. And this is going to be the tool that helps us deal with patterns of this nature. I can now say that Tn is equal to negative 1 to the power of n, n squared. Why? Well, the n squared is obvious. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. The negative 1 to the power of n is because this here is term 1, this is term 2, this is term 3, this is term 4, this is term 5. And whenever I have an odd term number, an odd n, I want to have a negative. And we know that negative 1 to the an odd gives you a negative. And whenever I have an even n, I want a positive, and we know negative 1 to an even gives me a positive. Pause the video and try this one for yourself. Establish what Tn would be equal to in this case. Maybe you said Tn is negative 1 to the n, n cubed, following on what we saw last time. The n cubed is definitely right. The one issue here is that this is different to the last time because this time when n is odd, we want it to be positive. And if n is odd, this is going to be negative 1 to an odd, which will be negative. To correct for that, we just need to put in a plus 1 here, because then when n is 1, for example, you'll have negative 1 to the 2, which will be positive. And when n is 3, for example, you'll have 3 plus 1, which is 4, negative 1 to the 4 is positive. The last sequence we're going to have a quick little look at is the Fibonacci sequence. It's a very famous sequence, so if you Google it, you'll find all sorts of interesting stuff about it. What's particularly interesting for us is the way it's formed. It's very different to any of the other ones we've looked at. How do you get to the next term? Well, you go 1 plus 1 gives you 2. 1 plus 2 gives you 3. 2 plus 3 gives you 5. 3 plus 5 gives you 8. So what will the next term be? 5 plus 8 gives you 13. And the term after that, 8 plus 13, which will give you 21. And so on, and so on. 